almost from the beginning defined a doctrine called in Latin extra ecclesiam nulla salus outside of the church no salvation which meant the church believed that it had the monopoly of salvation and this turned of course into the belief that the church could force down its doctrines on heathens. The result was that millions of people were killed in order to save them for Christ. Saxons in Germany, Muslims and Jews in Spain, Indians in Central America, and the Crusades, even the Crusades with their massacres in Jerusalem in 1099 can only be explained by that doctrine. If you go to the Islamic side, the Quran has five verses that are virtually a manifesto of religious pluralism. I advise you to read the fifth surah, verse 48, Al-Ma'ida 48, where it says, We, God, we have given you all your way and your law. If Allah had wanted, he would have made one community of all of you. But he wanted you to compete with each other in piety. To him you will all return, and then you will learn what you were disputing. Well, isn't that beautiful? Now, you may say that is the theory, but the practice is that Greece remained Greek speaking, Greek dancing, Greek eating, and Greek Orthodox after 500 years of Turkish Ottoman rule. If you go to Cairo, you will see more churches than mosques when you go to the airport because after 1400 lunar years, there are still 14 million Copts. And in Istanbul, where I live in summer, there are two dozen synagogues, an Armenian cathedral, a Catholic cathedral, an Orthodox cathedral, and Lutheran churches, for a Muslim, that's normal. If you go to Damascus, the, the crosses are lit, neon lit at night on the churches. If you go to Amman, the chief mosque and the ch chief cathedral are standing right in front of each other in downtown Amman. For a Muslim, that's nothing particular because the Muslims grew up with religious pluralism while in the West intolerance was so incredible that every European country except those that finally collapsed under warfare became mono-religious and remained mono-religious for centuries so that today is a, it is a major cult cultural shock when larger Muslim populations all of a sudden appear in countries which have not even tolerated Protestants or have not even tolerated Catholics for so long. This has to be kept in mind. Intolerance has been bred inside the church. And the Catholic Church abolished that infamous doctrine of extra ecclesiam nulla salus only in 1965, mind you. I give you another example. The Catholics and the Protestants in Germany had fought each other to such an extent that Germany where today we have 90 million people, only 6 million people were left. And then they concluded in 1555 a treaty in Augsburg with a 
fatal rule cuius regio eius religio whose rule whose religion <laughs> that meant that the entire population of a kingdom had to switch religion if the king did so while we say la ikra hafidin no force in religion their force in religion was installed through a treaty that was hailed as progress because it made every country mono religious i have said enough to prove that religions can contribute contribute to violence and therefore it is only fair if i ask the same question for islam as well because islam also during its history has had its share of violence and intolerance and also internal intolerance the second third and fourth khalifa were murdered the third and fourth khalifa were murdered by muslims and it was so to speak a theory in a nutshell under which we still suffer today in islam and that is the theory of the khawarij it was a secessionary group of early islam which said a muslim who commits a sin stops being a muslim and should be killed the simple as that we also have had when i say we it is the large family of islam the phenomenon of suicidal attacks there was in the 12th and 13th centuries in the neighborhood of iran and iraq a sect called the assassins um it was a fifer shiai gnostic sect now they were not called assassins because they assassinated but they were called assassins because that sounded like hush hush and hush hush stands for hashish it was religious fanatics who wanted to gain paradise by attacking under the influence of hashish highly symbolic targets at that time they couldn't attack the world trade center but they had attacked what was the equivalent of it at the time in terms of people like the world famous wazir al mulk the great greatest uh, administrator that islam had seen until then and they even tried to call salahuddin al ayubi who was the most famous personality both east and west of his time and that must give us something to think because the quran unconditionally uh, forbids suicide now these people had a minimal chance of survival they did not blow themselves up but as a single uh, attacker to go into a court means that virtually they have no chance of survival then we have a, a third element it cannot be denied that islam some time ago was much broader and much more spiritual than it is in some parts of the world today if you eliminate mysticism well mysticism is not essential for islam but it has enriched islam if you eliminate philosophy 
philosophy is not essential for Islam, but it has intellectually enriched Islam. If you, if you eliminate aesthetics, as they did in the Taliban, you end up eliminating humanism. And Islam becomes a very dry, rational, cerebral, unemotional thing that breeds intolerance. Because the largesse of views goes gradually out of the window. Now, we found this kind of atmosphere in certain organizations that are not terrorist and therefore are, so to speak, 